Hello, today I have something new. Instead of a power adapter, I'm looking at a power bank. In this case, the Bassius 100 watt output laptop power bank. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power bank do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and will eventually be compared to near competitors. In this video, the power bank will be reviewed to find out the charging capabilities to help you make an informed buying decision. Being the first in this new series, I don't have some fancy footage, literally a bit of stuff, of what's been done, so I do have this pile of things that will be coming in the future though, including some hybrid power adapters. So subscribe to catch these videos. If you want to help support the channel, there is a link to Patreon and all the other things in the description, so check it out. Special thanks to my patrons. This is the Bassius Blade. It is a slim form factor power bank aimed at a heavy user with a 100 watt output capability. The power bank weighs 515 grams. I don't have any comparisons for this yet, but data point one acquired. In the box, you get a carrying pouch, a cable, which I already stole for the bin of USB cables, and a power bank. You also get a user guide and a warranty card. The user guide tries to make clear what the different ports and capabilities of the device are, as well as some of the limitations of the device in certain applications. As usual, I pulled this from the Amazon listing and noticed that it has a few notes on the bottom. Mostly, it doesn't work with the Microsoft Surface devices. Power adapters do some kind of marketing nonsense when it comes to the battery capacity. In this case, 20,000 milliamp hours which is total nonsense. We're going to have to do a little learning and don't tune out. I'm gonna try and go deep here, but I want you to remember this bit. If it isn't clear, ask questions in the comments. Let's start at energy and work backwards. Energy is a state of storage or a state of work over time. The unit you are probably most familiar with is the kilowatt hour on your electric bill. Kilo being a thousand, so typical for power banks would be just the watt hour or WH. The watts in electronics at DC is just a product of the voltage and the current, and a battery has a complex voltage shape. The current is something that is controlled by the device that you plug into the battery. You have watts from the volts and the current, but we need to track that over time, and then you end up with the watt hours of capacity. Talking about a capacity in terms of milliamp hours, or MAH, essentially it only gives you a piece of the picture, and since the voltage of the battery is a variable, it tells you nothing. What we need is watt hours. If the marketing team needs a big number, they can put it in joules. Thankfully, this Bassius power adapter does print in the user manual and on the product itself the actual battery capacity of 74 watt hours and the average efficiency of conversion of 75%. So we know about 75% of the 74 watt hours is what we can expect to get out of this power bank. In reality, the power bank does a little better than that. I measured the output capacity at 60.6 watt hours or 3000 mAh at 20.2 volts constant. Notice that this 3000 mAh doesn't look like the 20,000 on the marketing claim. Even the packaging on this device makes known the fact that this device uses four 5000 mAh cells in series, hence a battery voltage of 14.8 and an actual capacity of 5000 mAh. With the losses for converting the voltage to the USB port, you end up with about 82% of the stored energy being sent to the output. The overall system efficiency with one of the best power adapters I've tested ends up around 71%. So using this power adapter wastes 29% of the energy you pay for to charge your device. That number will be worse with less efficient power adapters. I have to say it is nice to see someone write honest specifications on the device they are selling. I wish they would put these specifications on the product listing on the webpage because because it's all a guess when you buy. Companies need to be honest and state the watt hour capacity for any battery product. This is a crucial number and it tells you what the actual capacity of the battery is. There is also the issue of air travel. Specifically, the airlines limit the battery capacity you can carry on a plane to 100 watt hours per pack. This means certain packs don't advertise the watt hour capacity could get you in trouble with the airline security and you could end up throwing away that expensive power bank. It would be nice to also state the usable watt hour capacity. I doubt anyone will do this because it's a variable, but an average value could be listed or greater than some number of watt hours. This power bank has four total USB ports, two USB-A ports and two USB-C ports. The USB-A ports support various protocols. Most popular are the quick charge or QC modes, which you can get five, nine, and 12 volts from. My mini tester here 
maxes out at 35 watts, and I was easily able to hit that maximum with the USB-A port. So not bad. The USB-C port uses more modern and much more popular power delivery 3.0 specifications. This allows the USB-C port to deliver fixed output voltages, or variable output voltages as your device needs. In this case, the power bank provided 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltage modes. Everything USB PD 3.0 can deliver. The other modes available is a PPS or programmable power supply mode. This varies the output voltage to maximize charge efficiency. If a single port is being used, this offers a PPS mode of 20 volts. If both ports are being used, this offers a PPS mode of 10 volts. This does claim to be able to support Samsung's fast charging, and this is a very comprehensive set of protocols to support, and based on how many devices you have plugged in, the ports also do change function a little. On every device plugged and unplugged, the power delivery does renegotiate. Although a few times I got it to work without renegotiation, this is rare though. When I used this for my Bluetooth speaker build, I plugged my phone in for charging and it had to renegotiate the power to the speaker. Not a surprise. In terms of the marketing claims, this power bank doesn't do terrible. We know that the real capacity of this device and the claimed charging capabilities from some online data. Thankfully, the MacBook lists the watt hours for the battery as opposed to just the milliamp hours like phones. Why? It looks like the claims for phone charging are generous. For the MacBook Pro, 1.2 charges is pushing it. Probably more like 1.02 charges. Still, it isn't bad considering the battery life of modern notebooks. You'd be working for several days with this power bank. So, not the worst thing I've seen. Let's get rid of those milliamp hours though and just state watt hours, an actual unit of energy for everything. Okay, on to charging and discharging. This power bank didn't do bad. I used the recommended charger per the user manual and I got a charge time of 1 hour and 21 minutes from 0% to 100%. The energy consumed was 85 watt hours during this process. Also not bad. I don't have any other power banks to compare to yet though. The capacity I measured during the full discharge test was 60.6 watt hours. This meets the efficiency claims on the device. It ran for one and a half hours with a 40 watt load. I did some other tests after charging completed. I tested the power bank to see if the second USB port can still pass power through while plugged into the wall. And great news, it does. Up to about 30 watts will pass through to another device while plugged in for charging. I decided to try to test this device as an uninterruptible power supply and found that, sadly, this doesn't work. Once the power goes out and the power adapter runs out of juice, the USB PD negotiation kicked in and the device reset. And that means you required a plug and unplug of the output cable. This brings us into the overload testing. As with any power adapter, we can push this up to its limit to see how many watts it can deliver. In this case, starting at 100 watts, which you can do no problem, I pushed it up 102, 105, 110 watts, and 112 watts is where the overload condition kicked in. Note that this power adapter does not recover, so you do have to unplug and replug in the cable after any overload condition. Overall, this has been a great power bank for me. It has the higher output voltage capabilities, making it compatible with anything within the USB PD 3.0 specification. The price point is where it starts to get a little scary, around 100 US dollars as of 2022. It isn't cheap, but it is quite a highly capable device. I decided to start with a good power bank and hopefully I can find some other devices that can top this mark. I know there's giant power adapters out there, but these also put you over the limit for safe airline travel. This power adapter is capable of flying. It will make a great portable power supply for various projects in the future. If you have suggestions for other power adapters, leave them down in the description. It's gonna be a while. I have like a hundred other things to do as of now. One thing I didn't see on this power bank is a US or Canada safety listing. This is a new category and you will start to see this on power banks. It looks like this device doesn't have that specific mark though. Hopefully this is something that Bassius will get going forward. And I'm not actually 100% sure what the test method is for these and what it involves. It isn't the same thing as power adapters, which is more of an immediate threat of electrocution. This is more of a threat of fire if the battery goes pop. Thanks for watching. Next week, I'm looking at a Patreon request power adapter. So if you want to make special requests to join up to see a list of power adapters awaiting testing and help with future video ideas, there's also a schedule on my website for upcoming videos. I think I already bought too many power banks. Check the description for links. Thanks again and bye.